Hello, in this exercise, we would add an extra user to kubeconfig that uses TLS for authentication. It's good to have some fundamental understanding of OpenSSL, kubeADM, and kubeconfig to benefit more from this section. To let a user authenticate via TLS with the Kube API server, we need to generate a TLS key for the user and assign the TLS certificate for the user. This signature will be provided by the cluster certificate authority or CA. And this CA should have been typically set up by KubeADM during the cluster launch. Let's go ahead and create a new TLS RSA private key of modulus 4096 bits for the new user using OpenSSL. So the command is going to be this. Now we should have the key in this file, user2 dot key. So we now have the private key with us. Using this key, we are now going to generate a certificate signing request. And while we generate the certificate signing request, we can also put some detail in the request. And one basic detail that we can add here is the common name, which is the username that we want to have. So let's go ahead and issue the command for that. This time it's going to be OpenSSL REQ for the request. And we say new. And after that, we say hyphen out to specify the name of the file in which we want to store the certificate signing request CSR. And after that, we need to refer to the key using which this certificate signing request has to be created. And after that comes the subject. And in this subject, we are just going to say one thing, which is the CN. Okay, so this is the format. And now we can go ahead and hit enter. So this file should also be ready now, user2.csr, which stores the certificate signing request for the new user. So this is again there. I mean, we have the key and we also have the certificate signing request. And now comes the task of signing the CSR by the cluster authority. But how would we sign it? We could actually use the kubectl command to sign this. But before that, we need to encode the CSR file. So let's go ahead and encode this. We can use something like this, cat user2.csr, which, which prints the content of the file. And then we are going to encode it using base 64. And in the command, if you have seen, we have used this tr hyphen d and slash in to actually strip out the new line characters. But it would be handy if we store this somewhere. So for this, we can use something like export to create an, to create an environment variable. And we can name the variable like this user2 CSR base 64. So just a variable. And inside this variable, we're going to put everything that we did before. So let me just put the variable here. So export user2 hyphen CSR base 64. This is nothing but the variable name. And I'm going to store everything in this, the encoded output onto this variable. Okay, so I'll, I'll put a parenthesis and I'll also put this dollar sign. So now it should get exported. This variable should now contain the encoded CSR. So echo dollar user to CSR base 64. This should actually print everything that we stored in the previous step. We are now going to create a Kubernetes object called as a CSR. That is also called as a CSR, a certificate signing request, but this time it is a Kubernetes object. So in the Kubernetes object, we are going to specify this data and that is why we had to store this data in the variable. Now let's go ahead and create a Kubernetes certificate signing request object. So I'm going to name this file like csr-user2.yaml and inside the file, I'm going to type some information. So API version 
is going to be this certificates.k8s.io slash v1 beta 1 oh, yeah so kind the metadata we could give it some name so i'll name it csr fuser 2 and after that comes the spec section and in the spec section there is something called as groups so there is a group called a system authenticated which ensures that this user can get authenticated to the Kubernetes system, but it doesn't do anything else. No more authorization is given. So we'll just stick with this group for now. And then comes the request. This request is nothing but the actual encoded CSR data that we stored in a variable sometime back. So we could call the variable here instead of pasting the data. And that is why to make it easy, we have actually stored and the data inside a variable otherwise copying pasting would not be that easier if the content is big okay so user 2 csr base 64 this is the name of the variable then we have something called this usages in here we just say client auth because this user is nothing but a client so we could just give client auth and that's it we're just closing this file with three dots and save it the YAML file is now ready for us. And just like we create any other object, we can create this object too. Call the file. Yeah. Okay, so there should be a typo. Fine. So now I think uh, the file is ready. We could go ahead and try to create it again. So this is again a bad request is, is uh, what it says let's see what the error is yes we gave the variable inside the file but we actually have to substitute the variable so that it takes it right so we'll have to give like this we'll have to call the file name which is nothing but csr user 2.yaml and then we have to substitute the environment variables inside the file so we just give env subst and after that we give the kubectl command kubectl create hyphen f and then one more hyphen now it has got created successfully we can view if it is there in the list it is there so we we already have something which is which is by default created earlier and this is the one that we created right now and the condition is pending so we created a csr but then we have not signed the csr yet so how do we actually sign it Again, we can use kubectl for signing this. We could use the kubectl certificate command, approve the name of the CSR, which is CSR user two, and that's it. It should now get approved. Now, if you see the CSR list again, it says that it is approved. Okay, yeah, 44 seconds is nothing but the overall age. Uh, it just got approved, yeah. So we should have the signed certificate somewhere in the CSR object. So we need to retrieve the signed certificate from the CSR. Again, we could uh, get into this object using kubectl get command, followed by the object type, which is CSR. And then we type CSR user two, which is the name of the object. And we could give the JSON path filter, hyphen O JSON path. And what we need to actually filter is nothing but the certificate which is inside this object. So it would be present at this section dot status dot certificate. So this would actually print it for us. Okay, let's see what it has got. So this is nothing but the signed certificate, but this certificate is actually in base64 encoded form but we need to just decode it now so that you know we could uh, set it in cube config so this is an encoded form base64 encoded form we have to now decode it how do we decode it we just say base64 hyphen hyphen decode and after decoding we have to save it somewhere so we let's save it in a file called as user2.crt so now the decoded content is inside this file user2.crt so cat user2.crt now has the certificate 
Okay, I think I made a typo. It doesn't have anything here. So I think I gave one more pipe here. That's wrong. So no pipe. It's always good to verify. So let's try to view the content of it again. Dot CRT. Let's see if it has got something inside. Yes, now it has the certificate. This is actually decoded from Base64. This is not in Base64 format. It's now time to set the cube config. It's now we have to add a user to cube config. The first step is to actually add the user to cube config. So cube con cuttle config, and then we are going to set the credential for this user, user two, whose client key is present where in this file user two dot key. So this is present here, right? Yeah. So we just say this, and where is the client certificate? The user is a client, so that's why we we say client key and client certificate, and the client certificate is in this file user two dot csr. So we just name the user, and we just add the key and certificate for this user inside cube config. Enter. The user has been set now. After the user is set, we now have to add a context that would map this user with the cluster. And we know that in a typical cluster launched by Cubadium, the cluster name would by default be Kubernetes. So let's go ahead and create a new context like this. Config, and after that, we give set context. So in the previous command, we give set credentials because we added a user, and here we are going to give set context because we are adding a new context to cube config. So let's say context two, and let's call the cluster because we are going to map user and cluster. The cluster is nothing but Kubernetes, and the user is what? User two. So the user and cluster combination has been set for this context. So this context is also now created. So we created everything that we want. It's time to switch to the new context using the use context command. Config, use, but before that, let's see what the current context is. Yeah, config, current context. So this is the current context which we are using now. And if we have to switch the context, we could use use context command, and then we specify the name of the context, which is context two, and that's it. kubectl config current context would now print context two. Yes. So we are now scoped as user two, which has read-only permission. I mean, which just has authentication. It doesn't even have read-only permission. It only has authentication permission, the system authenticated group in it. So let's go ahead and try some command using this user as this user. So kubectl version. Okay, so there is something wrong here, which we have to troubleshoot. Let's look at the cube config to see if we get any information from that. So kubectl config view. Okay, so this is the user section. This is the user that we added. And this is the client certificate and client key that we are referring to. I think I made an error here because this should not be root user two dot CSR. It has to be CRT. So let's try to edit this file now. So nano, the cube config is stored here, right? This is a kind of a troubleshooting scenario, uh, which is also useful, I think and few in, in some cases. So dot cube slash config is the file in which the cube config is present. So we're just going to edit it directly inside the file. Let's go ahead and see. Now I'm just getting down and the client certificate uh, should I think be CRT. So that is how we saved it. We didn't, uh, the CSR is nothing but the certificate signing request. And that is not to be referred here. We only have to put the signed certificate this CRT, which we saved as a CRT before. Let me just save this file. So the cube config is modified. So let's just go ahead and verify what it has got now using cat again. Let's also verify the context now. Config current context. So this shows it is context two. Fine, so this is what we wanted. Let's go ahead and clear 
the screen. And now let's go ahead and issue a command, a cube cuttle command as the new user, cube cuttle version. Let's try this. Uh, yeah, it's working. This is because this user is getting authenticated to the APS server because it belongs to the system authenticated group, which we gave, you know, while we created the CSR. But it does not have any other authorization other than this. For example, if we try to get kubectl get notes, it wouldn't work because it does not have permission to do so. All right, I think this should be good for now. In this video, we saw how to add a new user using TLS authentication. We created a key, we created a CSR, and then we signed it. And after that, we used the signed certificate and the key in the cube config file. We created a context, we switched the context, and then finally, we tried to issue kubectl commands as the new user. Hope this video was useful and we thank you for watching.